freshman year, summer after college, I spent uh, two months in Ghana in West Africa with a volunteer service group. Um, my junior year, um, I spent a whole year in Kenya. Went to Thailand for a, a summer with some courses and always thinking that I would end up back either in Kenya or, or somewhere. Um, but realizing that New Orleans, there's no better place to be in the country and the nation um, to do international health work and development than the city of New Orleans and recognizing that I could be more effective here um, than I could be as an automatic outsider in somewhere like Nairobi where it was. Um, and obviously I was an outsider. I knew at the end what I wanted to do was work with vulnerable populations somehow. Um, I recognized that there was an inequality in terms of um, access to health care and health care, um, what, what was available. I'm currently the Executive Director of uh, Tulane School of Medicine's Office of Community Affairs and Health Policy. If one department, pediatrics for example, is working in one in the community and another department is working elsewhere, so we can really provide some support for that um, and there's kind of one voice for what we're doing in the community. Um, also looking at medical education, uh, research um, around what's going on in the community and in regards to health. The other role is, is how I started here. Um, I'm currently co-executive director of Tulane Community Health Centers. Um, the university as a whole operates nine health centers in the community. Um, they're our flagship, the one that um, I've been involved with for the past five years, um, provides primary care, behavioral health for all patients, irrespective of insurance status or ability to pay. So our goal is to link um, individuals with a primary care physician, um, many of who have um, not had a primary care doctor, um, have previously used the emergency room for care. So our goal is to, um, and what we've done successfully, I think, not just in Tulane as a community, is to rebuild the safety net health infrastructure of, of the city. Um, and we get rid of some of those traditional obstacles and barriers to care, such as transportation to get downtown to the site, um, something in the neighborhood. Uh, we provide a service on a sliding scale so that ultimately everybody can um, be healthy, contributing members of the community. Like up until a year ago, we were still in that post-Katrina um, rebuilding mode, but the past year, two years, the community as a whole has gone beyond that. We're not just rebuilding to what it was prior to the storm, we are building it better. Um, and that's true for the education sector, the healthcare sector. Obviously, as devastating as Katrina was, had that not happened, we would not be where we are today in terms of rebuilding the infrastructure of healthcare in the city. Um, nobody would have said, knowing what the issues were um, and the lack of access of healthcare in anyone's neighborhood that's accessible, no one would have said, all right, let's just close down the hospital and while we tried to do this. Um, so looking at the opportunities that were because of that, and it then changes the, um, it's a paradigm shift of how people think about their own health in terms of their responsibilities in this um, as individuals, how they think of primary care, what is primary care, why is it important. Um, that's a lot of what we did initially, this education, because that system was not in place prior to Katrina. Um, so, because we can build these neighborhood health centers, they can have great quality care, but if people aren't coming to the door, then what's the point? So that education was um, incredibly, um, incredibly important part of that and still is to this day. I think it's a, a big shift in terms of how people are thinking about health. Um, it's the healthcare delivery piece about what happens when I go to the doctor, but it's also um, the health of the community too, what happens outside those four walls of the clinic that I think we're, we as a community and um, us in particularly are, are striving for. And what makes us unique is um, we don't sit back and wait for people to come in. And when a patient comes back and says, oh, well, I didn't take my insulin, I didn't take this, the physician's response um, is not, oh, well, you're a non-compliant patient and closes the door um, until they come back with their meds. We ask questions. Why didn't you get your prescription filled? They, did they have the money to fill it? Did they have transportation to get to the pharmacy? Where is the pharmacy? Obviously, post Katrina, then there's devastated communities and rebuilding. And um, in some areas, even till today, there's not a grocery store um, for 10 miles. So, recognizing that and part of our questioning to really get to the root of, of, of what's going on um, so that we can communicate with people differently, we can bring in resources. We have a legal aid clinic, for example, inside of our clinic walls so that if um, Someone's not taking their insulin, not because they don't think it's going to work, but because they don't have 
their energy lights on um, to power the fridge, then we can get a legal person in, in there. Taking into consideration folks that may not have um, a high school diploma, um, from our standpoint, that will affect their health, um, bottom line. Whether it's how to read the prescription, how to read the handouts we give them, um, or just their ability to get a job where they can lead a healthy, productive um, life. So we recognize that and try to address that in every everything that we do. A lot of great things that came out of Katrina, but there's on the ground there was so much more collaboration than there ever has been before. Um, especially that there's, I mean, we represent nine of these health centers that at, at one point in time um, there were nearly 90 across the city. Different shapes and sizes, different services, some were on a bus, on a mobile unit, and some were in a big brick building like we are. Um, but the fact that we were able to come together for a common cause and work together and collaborate inside of our clinic walls, when we have different, we have a team of physicians and social workers and pharmacists, we say we want everyone to work at the top of their level. So, for example, our physician does not need to be the one educating about medications because that the pharmacist can do that best. The same way that um, I've, my husband was Teach for America, and so our group down here as Lindsay and um, everyone are in, in the education business. So I'm hearing from a good friend of mine who's an um, assistant principal. She's driving her kids in that school to doctor's appointments in the evenings or on Saturdays. Her time can be better used focusing on, on the education piece of it, but she recognizes that if those kids aren't going to doctor, they're not going to be a success in school. So ways to partner with one another so that we can both do what we do best. Um, and we need to lean on the next person in, in the community who's working on working on something else. We can't do it all. Everyone is resource strapped, financially, personnel. The more that we can work together, the better. I think we were lucky enough because we had this group um, of like-minded individuals doing the same thing, we were able to get to that policy level to make that change, um, which had us been working independently would not have happened. Um, so I think trying to remember that in, um, in other ways and in other sectors about recognizing when you need to um, kind of maybe step back for the greater good of getting this to the next level for sustainability or policy change or whatever that's going to mean for whatever you're um, passionate about to um, give people an opportunity to achieve whatever they can. Um, and in order to do that, people need to be healthy. Making sure that everyone, every individual is recognized um, and treated with dignity and respect regardless of those social situations. Um, I think that so much can be gained just by um, the honesty and the humanity and, and recognizing that we all have stories, we all have um, some sort of situation that we wish at some point was different. And putting yourself in their shoes, I walk into a setting, how am I greeted, how am I treated? Um, I'm thinking about that every day.